Today we're going to talk about Pac-Man. But before I get to that, I have a little something to get off my chest. Guys, as I've said in the very first episode of Urban Legends of Video Gaming and several videos after that, there is no schedule to this series, nor is there any clearly defined end. Asking me when I'm going to do another episode is pointless, because you're not going to get an answer. The answer to that question will always be when I feel like doing one, so stop asking. That being said, let's get to the legend. Pac-Man is an early arcade game released in 1980 by Namco. In it, you play as a yellow circle named Pac-Man who navigates a maze eating dots and fruits. The character is harassed by four ghosts with differing behaviors who will cause you to lose a life if you contact them. Your only defense, other than running away, is the power pellets found in each level which will cause the enemies to retreat, and in early levels give Pac-Man the ability to eat the ghosts, disabling them for a set amount of time. It's a simple concept that has been copied and ripped off constantly after it, and the game featured many sequels, spin-offs, and related media such as an animated cartoon and even a hit song, Pac-Man Fever. There's a lot to say about Pac-Man that isn't common knowledge, mostly about the creation of the game and character, but sometimes it can be hard to separate fact from fiction, especially when there are often conflicting stories, sometimes from the same source. For example, the Wikipedia page for Pac-Man lists two conflicting origins for the name in the same section. One thing that most people don't realize is that the game was originally created for women. The creator of the game, Toru Iwatani, observed that arcade gamers were mostly men and the women found in arcades were often dragged along by their boyfriends. To make them into paying customers, he decided to create a light-hearted game that would appeal to women by differing from the dark-themed space shooters and sports titles that made up most arcades. Everything down to the fruit was crafted with a female audience in mind, as his rationalization for this was simply that women like to eat fun foods and that they like to eat dessert afterwards. Regardless of its estrocentric machinations, Pac-Man was a hit with both genders, but really, what the hell is Pac-Man anyway? With the game's primitive graphics, he appears to be a circle with an opening and closing mouth, but the artwork on the various cabinets have given him legs and sometimes arms, and in some cases, even a long nose. You might have heard that the design of the character was based on a pizza with a slice missing, stating that Toro Iwatani had a eureka moment while eating pizza and came up with the design of the character right there. This, however, is false, as Iwatani himself admitted it was a lie way, way back in 1986, admitting that the character was created by basically starting with the Japanese character for mouth and making it round and simplified. Despite this admission, he continues to not let the truth get in the way of a good story and repeats the pizza story to this day. So that's Pac-Man, but what the hell is a Pac anyway? Well, there are two conflicting stories as to how the character came to be called Pac-Man. The first is that since the character's entire existence revolved around eating, Pac-Man was an example of onomatopoeic slang. For those of you who are unfamiliar with onomatopoeia, it's a word for something that describes the sound it makes. Some simple examples of English words that do this would be hiccup, bang, boom, zoom, splash. In other words, if you could describe the word as a sound effect, it's an onomatopoeia. In Japanese, an example of onomatopoeic slang for eating would be paku paku tebiru, translated literally as eating pak pak, with the pak pak sound being the sound of an opening and closing mouth like this. So from paku paku came Pac Man who eats. Another story is that in Japan the character was originally known as Puck Man, due to his round shape resembling a hockey puck. He was changed to Pac-Man for the American release due to concerns over arcade vandals easily changing the P in Pac-Man to an F, giving us Fuck-Man. So, which is true? Well, it's easy to point at the first story as being the true one as it makes more sense, it has a linguical logic applied to it, and the Fuck-Man story just seems unbelievable as it resolves solely around businessmen concerned that gamers will transform their cabinets into paragons of vulgarity. But the Puckman story actually is 100% true, which is easily verified by simply looking at any Japanese arcade cabinet for the game, 
which are clearly labeled Puckman. The Paku Paku story does have some basis in truth, however, as the game was originally going to be called Pakuman in Japan. The character did eventually wind up being called Pac-Man in Japan, as the game's sequel, Super Pac-Man, was released worldwide with that name. Now, you may be thinking, hold on, wasn't Ms. Pac-Man the sequel? Well, that's another interesting thing. Ms. Pac-Man was not created by Namco at all, and thus is technically not part of the series. An American company called General Computer Corporation started out to create an arcade enhancement kit for Pac-Man called Crazy Auto. Basically, they're kits that takes a game and enhances it, but keeps the original game engine. They released it with different artwork, under a different title, and boom, it's like an entirely new game. One of their attempts was Super Missile Attack, an enhanced version of Missile Command, which got them sued by Atari. Part of the lawsuit settlement said they couldn't release any future enhancements without the permission of the original manufacturer of the game. But there was a loophole in the wording, as they only had to get permission from the manufacturer, not the developer. So, instead of having to deal with Namco, the General Computer Corporation went through Midway, who published Pac-Man in the United States. Midway were getting impatient with Namco, who were dragging their heels with Super Pac-Man. So they bought the rights to Crazy Auto, changed the sprites, and released Ms. Pac-Man. This would lead to more unauthorized sequels from Midway, though eventually they'd wind up having to turn over the rights to the game to Namco, who also ended their business relationship. Namco has almost ignored the existence of these games, such as Ms. Pac-Man, only including it in their collections twice, and never speaking about it, or any of the other Midway-created titles. So, there you have it. Sometimes the truest-sounding stories are false, and the most ridiculous ones are true. And the fun ones about pizza are good enough to repeat years after you admitted you were full of crap. So join me next time, and we'll talk about chicks with dicks.